Periscope. Johnny. Good evening, Johnny. How are you? John Blue D. Partners in play. Hey, how are you all this evening? How is everyone? My name is Anita Roshika. How you doing? Uh, uh, dang it. Partners in play. What's your name again? I'm sorry. Yeah, I know you've told me at least twice and I keep forgetting. And um, John Blue, don't make this a block party. How are you all? As you know, my name is Anita. I am the living unashamed speaker and success coach. I have been Janae. Yes. How you doing, girl? <laughs> I have been sharing lately on Periscope, encouraging you, trying to inspire you to live unashamed of your secret story. And throughout the weeks, I have been covering various topics related to living unashamed. Tonight's no different. I wanted to come on to Periscope real quick and chat with you about living unashamed, being boxed in by rumors. When people try to treat you as if the rumors that they've heard about you are true. Now, they don't come to you directly and say, hey, I heard A and B. Is it true? I heard B and C. What's, what's going on with that? No, they don't come to you di directly and speak to you about it. They try and create this circle around you where they whisper to their friends and then those friends whisper to the next friends. And then, of course, if you remember the game we all played when we were kids and we were at summer camp, when they put all the kids on the picnic benches or in the chairs, started with the rumor on one end and by the time it got down to the other end, it was something obviously wrong and totally different. Anytime you pass a rumor or gossip about somebody or anytime you approach somebody and you behave like what you heard was true versus just one-on-one -on -one having a conversation with them, not at them or, or to them, but with them and respect them as an individual. There's a lot that goes on in this world out here. And just to assume that you heard something about somebody and it's true or somebody was accused of something and it's true you need to sit down and have a conversation and you can't send somebody to have a conversation with somebody and then have them track that trash back to you because that person can't travel with their sarcasm their context their texture of speech their nonverbal cues that person can't travel with any of that i know right today girl I attended a um, seminar this weekend and I went in support of the host because we're colleagues, but you know, she was doing video and pictures and you know, cause she's trying to put a reel together so that she can get the attendance at her events to go up. Evidently she's been doing these events for a number of years, but the attendance isn't where she wants it to be. So she came around asking questions and when she got to me the, her motion or response towards me was just I was just totally shocked we had a conversation in the parking lot about starting businesses but then when she approached me with the video there she did it as if I had been coming to her for services mm, no this is not a testimonial we were colleagues standing in a parking lot having a conversation but now, if, so if you need to try to make others look or feel less than, hey Alicia, how you doing? I'm just talking about, of course, living unashamed. And when people try to box you in with rumors about you, try to um, make somebody else feel ashamed or less than, then I need you to stop and check yourself in the mirror. You shouldn't need anybody else's response. Or validation for your own self-esteem self-image or your business because if you're actually authentic and you're true about what you're doing it's going to come across and the growth is going to be organic the growth is going to be true 
you know, I've counseled clients in the past and my clients loved me. There were some that were, you know, target on. We were immediate and they knew Miss Washington was the counselor that they wanted. Others, it took them a minute to warm up because people don't trust you within the first 15, 20 minutes of meeting you. There has to be an exchange of energy. There has to be shared atmosphere. Some people actually have to see you, how you respond to adversity and difficulty to see whether or not, well, if I go to her in a client session, is she going to share what I'm saying to her out to other people? I'm just talking about living unashamed and when people try to close you in by rumors that they've heard about you. And instead of people, the, see, the energy is critical to me. And it, Janae, girl, one on, okay? I solely understand it. Because for me, it's energy. But then I also have to see you move with other clients. I also have to see you. It's not going to be instant for me in any case, not with clients or if I was going to somebody. It, it just, I need to see you in motion with other people. I need to actually see you produce the results that you say you can in your marketing, your advertising, or what you stand in front of me saying in your mission statement. I got to see it move before I would actually trust it before trust is laid. And that takes more than just one or two conversations or a conversation in the parking lot. I do have three points for you tonight. Like your energy is great and I have watched it get more inviting. Let's go, Gara, because I thank you very much for noticing and thank you for saying it. I am, thanks to Coach Amber, I am getting more and more relaxed being on video. <laughs> I, I actually used to just hate it, dread it. And then I'm working with another coach, Coach Doreen Rainey. And she has been all over me about not being on Periscope, about not being on social media at all. Because when I first met Doreen, I, I didn't know what Facebook was. I didn't know what tweeting was. I didn't know what, I didn't know what any of that was. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Beautiful is working. Woo, 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 woo. Thank you very, very much. I had no idea how to even use social media. But between, you know, the coaches that I'm actually working with, Doreen, and I took a class from Christine St. Ville on blogging and using social media. And they have just hooked me right up with definitions, knowing how things work, the front end of a website, the back end of a website, so knowing what Facebook is, how to actually post, what to say in a post, <laughs> you know, because it's one thing to have a page, but then what do you do after you get the page? You need content, you need posts to put out there. And then actually being, putting your own stuff out there which is very difficult for some people, such as somebody like me, because I am a rather quiet and private person. Um, people have said to me before, Nita, you never look, you never smile. No, I'm just not laughing because your joke's not funny. <laughs> it's not rocket science. Or if I'm there to learn and I'm there with paper and pencil and paying attention, I'm not on joke time because I'm about my business. I got stuff to do. I have goals, I have big dreams that I've asked God for, and I can't play small or give him anything other than my best, but then ask him for his best. Be brave, but need you encouraging folks out there, girl. And you know what? The two of you, Janae and Alicia, I see you all inviting other, inviting your followers to other people's scopes, but I never see the two of you scope. So I need you to. <laughs> like me to get over it and get out there scoping. But let me get to these points. The first point is be strong in your values. Don't let others try to shape you according to what they think they see. <laughs> Don't let others try to shape you or mold you according to what they think they see. You are the only person that has been with you day in and day out your entire life. You are the only person that knows how your emotions work, the things that you think about, the things that you value, your morals. You are the only person that knows all of that. And if somebody doesn't come to you 
toe to toe and have a conversation with you, then they don't know that. And then they have to judge and respect whether or not you actually trust them to tell them the truth. If a stranger walks up to you and starts asking you personal questions, why would they expect that you're going to give them the answers to the questions? Now you may respond, because I'm good at that. I'm very good at deflecting. I'm very good at giving a response, but not generally answering the question. It's a skill. Um, my One of my grad school professors was actually the one that called me out on it. That was Dr. Creighton at Virginia State University. I was good and golden with all the other professors. And then just one night in class, Dr. Creighton went in on, he went in on me. I, you know, I tried to get the whole shy bit because I didn't want to talk a lot in class. I just wanted to do my work, get my grades and move on. Dr. Creighton wasn't having it. He wanted me present. He wanted me authentic and he wanted to know what I thought. And he went in on me one night in class. And from that point forward, in his classes, at least, I talked and I respond. Be strong in your values and do not allow other people to, to make you shrink, to make you dull your light, to make you keep your opinion to yourself if you choose to give it. Because you talking is not mandatory. You don't have to tell other people what you think unless it's your spouse or your children. Nobody else are you mandated to talk to, have a conversation with, or give your personal information to. People try and put themselves in professional positions in your life, important positions in your life, paramount positions in your life, and they don't hold those positions. You are the only person that decides whether or not somebody can hold that position in your life. They may want it, they may desire it, they may even walk around telling lies that they actually have it, and they don't. Merely because they say it does not make it true. Do not allow other people's other people to determine or other people to make you change your values or to make you shrink or play small. The other one is, speaking about playing small, do not allow other people to change your goals. If somebody tries to use your insecurities or your failures against you, be strong in who you are. And in being strong, you don't have to fight back verbally. You don't have to fight back physically. You know who you are and you can be that in your silence. You don't have to respond at all. Like I said, unless it's your children or your spouse. Other than that, you don't have to give them your internal intrinsic values. You don't, hi Michael, you don't have to change your goals for other people. For instance, the goals that I have been taught to set are goals that I need God to actually be able to accomplish those goals. If it's something that I can attain myself, then it's not a goal. That's just something that I said I'm going to do. That's not a goal. Goals are, goals are attached to your objectives. Goals are, good evening, goals are tasks and objectives that are so big, you have to have God's help to get it done. If you don't need God's help to get it done, why are you even setting it as a goal? That's just something that you're stating that you're going to do. It's a statement. Just do it because it's attainable by you. You know it's attainable by you. Just do it. A goal. Some people say, well, I'm going to cook dinner five days in a row. That's a statement that you just made. That's not a goal. But if you say bigger goals, I am going to set out a plan and become a millionaire by age 30. You're 25 and you've just graduated from college. That's a big goal. That's something that you're going to need God's help to get done. You're going to need a higher power to actually make that happen. That is a goal. That's something that you can attain. That's something that you can march to. It strengthens your faith. It builds up your spirit and it encourages your soul. Those are the types of goals that you need to set. So two was don't change your goals because of other people. And number one was don't change your values because of other people. And lastly, number three, be true to you no matter what. Don't play small for other people. Don't play small for friendship. 
Don't play small because you're in a group and you want to go along to get along. And then don't pretend that you, you're more than you are. You are, as you sit right now, a perfect human being because you are just as God intended you to be and you are where he intended you to be at this point in your life. Anything that anybody else says, in one end, out the other. Don't consider it. Don't pay it any attention. If they need to get it, <laughs> to get it off their chest, let them say it, act like they're listening, and then just go on about your business. Walk away. Do not allow other people start rumors about you, stop you from shining, stop you from shining your light bright, stop you from being the, all of you out there right now listening to the scope, even if you are watching a replay or a recording of this Periscope, you are enough. You are a great person just as you are. And like I said, you are perfect just as you are. Because no matter how old you are, no matter what your failures have been or your insecurities are, no matter what family has said about you, no matter who has turned their back on you and walked away, the one being that you have that is with you all the time that you can count on is God. And in that being, you have everything you need. You say your prayers, you set your meditation so that not only are you speaking to him from your heart, a lot of people hit it and they try to talk real fast and they're doing Father God's in between every other word. God wants your prayers off your heart and he wants it true. <laughs> I, have, I have one cousin and when she said prayers, she would cuss like a sailor. <laughs> she would cuss like a sailor. But that's who she was. That's, that's who she was from sunup to sundown 24-7. Whatever it was that she went through in her life that shaped her to be the person that, that she was, because she has since passed. But whatever happens in her life to shape her to be the person that she was, that was between her and God. That wasn't for me to judge. When she said prayers and she said them off her heart, to God. That's between her and God. That's not for me to sit in judgment of. Oh, well, you shouldn't be cursing while you're praying. She's not praying to me. She's not praying. She's not praying to any of you. She wasn't praying to any human beings. She was praying to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that is who you need to hold on to, no matter what. So whatever rumors people have out there that they're passing around, whatever gossip people have out there that they're passing around, just let it miss you. And if anybody tries to treat you as if what they heard about you is true versus stepping to you toe to toe and just having a conversation with you about it not to you or at you having a conversation with you about it because if somebody comes to you in an angry tone you don't have to respond to that and if somebody comes to you in an accusatory tone accusatory tone you don't have to answer that either be strong in who you are, especially you parents out there. Because you parents out there, you don't just have yourself to look out for and yourself to protect. You also have your kids to look out for and protect. And you know kids, people try to treat kids like they're crazy. And they, I know a lot of children that are smarter and have better common sense <laughs> than most of the adults that I know. Even adults that are in prominent positions, do not let a title, <laughs> yes, <laughs> do not, do not, do not let a title make you feel that that person is more important than you, that person knows more than you, that person has accomplished more than you. I know people that have accomplished great things in life, but they are satisfied writing their books, collecting their advance checks, going on book tours, and then they go home and sit down. They could do wonderful things as pastors. They could do wonderful things as teachers, college professors. Their names could be big and bright and in lights. What they want to do is spend time with their kids. They, they want to, like I said, he writes his books. He does his book tours. And then he goes home and sit down and talk to his kids and his wife. Everybody that has the knowledge doesn't want it to be on their shoulders or stripped, stripped across their back. In a, in a jacket or across their chests in medals and plates and in and, and colors. Everybody's not like that. And a lot of the people that have titles, they're just in that position because they're charismatic. 
not necessarily because they have the knowledge they're the, or they're real rounded they're well educated they're well whatever it is that the position is supposed to require a lot of people don't have that i have a friend that actually walked he walked out y'all he <laughs> walked out of a church service this weekend he said that uh before they even got to the sermon, there was a young lady in the church, a member of the church that was supposed to introduce the pastor. And she just started hollering and in his words, not mine, hollering and screaming and prophesying. And she was saying things that he knew were not biblically true whether or not she was speaking to an actual individual or, or prophesying what she was saying points that she was trying to get across the stories in the bible that she was using to actually make those points were not true she would take she was taking she had the names correct but she was taking the story out of context and we've all seen that we've all been in churches or in lectures in classes and you look at the professor or the pastor, you know, just with the side eye, because everybody else is clapping their hands and, you know, maybe jumping up and down, but you're sitting there looking at them with the side eye like, now I learned that story long time ago, and that was not how it went down. When I open my Bible, that's not how that goes. It's the same thing with rumors and gossip. Just give them the side eye because you know that's not how that goes. And if people come at you, with rumors like at you not trying to have a civil or a rational conversation with you but if they come at you a <laughs> proper lion <laughs> to make you a mess <laughs> if people come at you what you say to them is you know you can't block my shine i know what my goals are i know what my values are i know what my mission in life is i know what god wants me to fulfill this season in my life and that's what i'm going to go after so if you disagree, you're entitled to your opinion, but I'm also entitled to live my life the way that I want. That's my scope for tonight. My name, like I said, is Anita Washington of thatanitalive.com, teaching you and inspiring you to live unashamed of your secret story. If I can answer any questions, if I can respond to anything, if there's something that I said tonight that you disagree with, please email me, tweet me. I'm on Facebook. All my handles are thatanitalive.com. Oh, good info. Thanks, Michael. All of my handles, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Awesome. Thanks, Janae. Because in Janae, you know, you saw the first couple of schools when I was kind of cold. <laughs> Your sister wasn't used to being on camera, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, my website is thatanitalive.com. I've shared a lot of my personal stories with family drama and trauma that I have survived. And I've shared a lot of inspiration and in, in these points that I share with you on Periscope in blog posts. Feel free to check them out. Leave me comments or email me. My email is Anita at thatanitalive.com. Thanks. That's okay. You are grown and quick. <laughs> Janae, you a, you a mess. <laughs> so, you guys, thank you very much for being on my scope tonight. And I will see you probably tomorrow night, same time. Same time, same bat channel. Talk to you later. Thanks.